Hey, it's Will here for HairGuard. Have you ever wondered what hair loss treatments actually work? I mean, literally how much hair is it gonna regrow? And not only that, but how do the treatments compare with each other? So why isn't there a simple comparison of how much new hair you can expect from each treatment? That way you could simply and easily prioritize which treatment stack you want to use. Well, in this video, that's exactly what I'm gonna show you. A standardized, simple, easy to understand ranking of how much new hair is expected from each hair loss treatment. So I'm gonna talk about the top 10 treatments of all time. And these are treatments that have been through rigorous scientific studies. So can you guess what the number one most effective hair loss treatment is? This may actually surprise you. And I guarantee you won't be expecting number three on the list because this is a treatment that no one is talking about, which is absolutely crazy. I'm the founder of HairGuard. I've got a master's degree in chemical engineering and I've been researching hair loss for over 10 years. And this is gonna be one of my favorite and most interesting YouTube videos that I've ever made. So let's do this. So when scientists run studies to compare the effectiveness of various treatments, they generally use one of the following two measures. Firstly, they take photographs of the men's heads before the start of treatment and then photographs at the end. These before and after photos are then passed on to the dermatologists who didn't participate in the main part of the study and don't know what treatment the men in the photos received. The dermatologists rate the photos for improvement on a simple scale, which is usually four points. No visible hair growth is the worst possible rating, followed by minimal hair regrowth, moderate, and then finally marked regrowth. Marked regrowth is the best possible rating, obviously. The second method involves marking a small dot on a particular spot on the patient's head that is balding, typically in the crown or the frontal area. And then they use a special camera and software to actually count the number of hairs in that spot. Usually the area of the spot is one centimeter squared. Most research papers on hair loss actually use the second method. Firstly, because it's objective. In other words, it doesn't require a doctor's opinion. And secondly, the final result is one single number. This allows the treatment to be easily compared against other hair loss treatments. And it's this method that we'll be using today to rank the top 10 hair loss treatments from least to most effective. So let's get into it. Number 10, Bimataprost. This averages 4.7 hairs per centimeter squared. This is a prostaglandin analog that has been approved by the FDA to treat hypertrichosis of the eyelashes. In other words, eyelashes that are not fully developed. It restores their length, thickness, and darkness. Reportedly, the company that developed Bimataprost was at one point considering getting FDA approval for hair loss, but this never actually happened in the end. So the two main problems now are that it hasn't been approved for baldness and it's crazy expensive. A tiny bottle can cost over $100. So for this reason, it's a non-starter for most men with hair loss. Okay, moving on. Number nine, minoxidil 2%. This gives you 8.1 hairs per centimeter squared extra. This was the first drug that the FDA ever approved against baldness nearly 35 years ago. And as you can tell from its low ranking in today's top 10, things have moved on since then. Part of the reason for Minoxidil's low hair count is its very large number of non-responders. About one out of every two people who try Minoxidil 2% will basically see no results whatsoever. The remainder can expect generally pretty modest regrowth. This will peak around the one year mark after the start of the treatment. It will then typically go on a very slow decline over the years that follow. To this day, we're not sure about minoxidil's exact mechanism of action. Most likely it's related to the fact that it widens the blood vessels and increases microvascular circulation around the hair follicle bulb. Okay, number eight, ketoconazole shampoo, aka Nizarol, is 12.4 hairs per centimeter squared. Coming in a spot above minoxidil, we have ketoconazole shampoo. So you'll find ketoconazole is also referred to as Nizarol shampoo. This is the original and most widely used brand today. But the drug itself is very old, and there are now countless generic alternatives that cost a fraction of the branded 
Miserale. Kitchikonazole's shampoo is unique in today's top 10 in that it's the only shampoo in the list. This might seem a bit odd. After all, a large percentage of hair loss products on the market today are shampoos. Now, the reason most of these are not effective is that shampoos only stay on our scalp for a few seconds or minutes at most. This is generally not enough time for the active ingredient to act. Ketoconazole seems to be special in this respect. It somehow manages to take effect even after a relatively brief application. And we're not sure exactly why that is. Be that as it may, ketoconazole shampoos are officially sold for the treatment of dandruff rather than hair loss. So no regulatory body in the world has ever approved it for this indication. And given that its patent has now expired, nobody ever will. If you decide to try it for your own hair loss, the way to do it would be to apply it at the start of your shower. Then wash your body as normal and rinse off the shampoo at a minimum of five minutes later. A word of warning though, though this stuff almost certainly has an effect against hair loss, it can be very harsh on your scalp and it will leave your hair pretty lifeless. So you'll probably have to use another shampoo immediately afterwards in order to restore your hair's more bouncy appearance. Okay, number seven, Clascotterone, also known as Brizula, with 14.3 mu hairs per centimeter squared. Clascotterone is a topical anti-androgen that is currently in late stages of development. It works by blocking DHT directly on the scalp. The company bringing it to market has already run several successful trials in the treatment of hair loss. And they are now in the late stages of preparation for the final large scale trial. If this is successful, then Clascotterone will become the first hair loss product to be FDA approved in nearly 30 years. And its brand name will probably be Brizula. Now, even though Brizula hasn't hit the market yet, we already have enough preliminary data from the existing published trials to estimate its effectiveness. At nearly 15 new hairs per centimeter squared, it's clearly stronger than 2% minoxidil. And because it's a topical with very little systemic absorption, by all indications, it doesn't cause sexual side effects, unlike finasteride. But on the flip side, because it will hit the market under patent, it's no doubt gonna be pretty expensive, probably over $100 or more a month. And even if the final trial is successful, it will probably be several more years before Brizula is available on the market. Okay, so number six is good old minoxidil 5% with 14.9 hairs per centimeter squared regrown on average. A few years after the original Rogaine, a new, more powerful 5% version hit the market. Marketed as extra strength, this stronger version of Rogaine was clearly better at regrowing hair. Not only did it give more hair, but it did so much faster. According to the results from one large trial that directly compared the two, after eight weeks, it resulted in an average response that the 2% version produces after 16 weeks. So on the flip side, there's noticeably higher frequency of side effects, unfortunately. The most common are headaches, itching and dermatitis. Okay, number five, finasteride one milligram, and this gives 15.9 hairs per centimeter squared extra. Finasteride was the second and to this day last drug to be FDA approved for hair loss, just a few years after minoxidil. It works by blocking the production of DHT, the male hormone believed to be linked to hair follicle miniaturization. Finasteride is no doubt more powerful than minoxidil. It will stop hair loss in over 80% of men and many will see noticeable regrowth. Because it's a pill, it's also far, far more practical. Finasteride users are far more likely to stick with the treatment over many years or even decades, something that's rarely the case with minoxidil. The one major disadvantage of finasteride and the reason many men won't even consider it has to do with the side effects. Estimates vary, but these probably affect between two to 4% of users. And these side effects can be nasty, most often reduced sexual desire, erectile dysfunction, and reduced sperm volume. The patent has now expired, so apart from the branded Propecia, you can purchase generic finasteride at a fraction of the cost. Finasteride is sold in two strengths. There's a five milligram pill for the treatment of benign prostate enlargement and a one milligram version for hair loss. And because of the price difference between these two versions is very small, many guys will just purchase the five milligram version and cut it up into five pieces to get one milligram per day. This makes the treatment even more cost-effective and very, very cheap, frankly. Finasteride is prescription only, which is good because it means you'll need to talk to a doctor before going on it. So go to your doctor, 
get a prescription and keep them in the loop, especially if you see side effects. Okay, number four, do Tasteride 0.5 milligrams, and this gives 17.6 new hairs per centimeter squared. So Dutasteride is very similar to Finasteride. It's a DHT blocker with a very similar mechanism of action to Finasteride, the inhibition of the enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT. This enzyme is called 5AR, but compared to Finasteride, Dutasteride is even more powerful. There are two versions of 5AR in our body, and they're simply called 1,5-AR and 2,5-AR. Dutasteride is three times more powerful than finasteride in blocking 2,5-AR, and a whopping 100 times more powerful for blocking 1,5-AR. These differences become evident when scientists measure the levels of DHT in the body after taking the two drugs. Finasteride users can expect a roughly 70% decrease in their DHT levels, this compares to over 90% for dutasteride. Surprisingly, even though dutasteride is clearly more powerful, it doesn't appear to have more side effects. You get the same kinds of sexual problems in the form of reduced libido, erectile dysfunction, and ejaculation disorders, but not really at a higher frequency. On the other hand, while finasteride is approved and marketed for hair loss, dutasteride is not. To this day, in the US and most of the rest of the world, it is only sold as a treatment for benign prostate enlargement. The exceptions are Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, which in recent years have approved dutasteride for hair loss. Okay, so moving on, number three on our list, Botox with 18.9 hairs per centimeter squared. This is a relative newcomer to the field of hair loss. Botox, or botulinum toxin by its forename, is a powerful neurotoxin that temporarily paralyzes the muscles. It does this by blocking the release of a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. With the muscles blocked, they eventually relax, leading to smoother skin and fewer wrinkles. For this reason, Botox has been widely used in the cosmetic industry. Around a decade ago, doctors discovered that it is also effective against hair loss. So let me explain why this is so. A fundamental problem with balding scalps is they're in a perpetual state of increased tension. This tension originates from a layer of connective tissue located underneath the scalp. This tissue is called the glare aponeurotica. The glare transmits this tension to the overlying scalp skin, triggering a process of chronic inflammation and fibrosis. By fibrosis, we mean that the tissue around the hair follicles starts to become scarred and hardened. Eventually, the scarring can become so extensive that it's practically impossible for healthy hair follicles to grow. In 2010, a pair of doctors out of Canada put this idea of scalp tension to the test. They recruited 50 balding men and gave them two Botox sessions spaced 24 weeks apart. Then they let another 24 weeks pass and measured the men's hair regrowth. So 48 weeks in total from the first session, nearly a year. 75% of men had a noticeable response to the treatment. And as you can see in these before and after photos from two participants, the results were often pretty dramatic. In the years that passed, these results have been replicated and extended many times. As simple as it is in principle, Botox to this day remains one of the most effective treatments for hair loss. One of its strong points is that you only need to go for one session every six months. The rest of the time, you can sit back and forget completely about your hair loss. Alternatively, you can combine it with other more conventional treatments like antiandrogens and get synergistic results. The main drawback is the really, really high cost. Botox is not something you can do at home and the cost will be in the range of several hundred dollars per session depending on the severity of your hair loss. Okay, so number two, moving on. Minoxidil fortified with finasteride, which gives 19.3 new hairs per centimeter squared. The top two treatments on our hair loss list are combination treatments. And so the number two spot, we find the pair of FDA approved treatments combined topical minoxidil mixed with finasteride. As we saw, minoxidil on its own is not particularly powerful. Finasteride is more powerful, but with potentially very unpleasant side effects. A way past these side effects would be to mix it with minoxidil and apply it topically. So topical minoxidil plus finasteride does work very well, but you have to find it and get a prescription yourself. Okay, moving on to the number one thing, minoxidil plus microneedling and this gives 50.4 new hairs per centimeter squared. This is also one of the cheapest treatments on the list. It's also one that is not FDA approved and does not require a doctor's prescription. And despite this, it takes the top spot 
by a very wide margin. Recall that the second most effective treatment, minoxidil fortified with finasteride, gives on average 19.3 hairs per centimeter squared. At 50.4 hairs, the combination of minoxidil and microneedling is 2.6 times more effective. And this combination is more than six times as effective as using minoxidil just on its own. Microneedling or derma rolling, as it's also called, has anti-hair loss properties on its own as it stimulates growth factors in the scalp. In other words, you might get some regrowth even if you microneedle your scalp without minoxidil or any other topical. But throw in minoxidil and the effect explodes. You get the independent hair growth effect of minoxidil and the independent effect of microneedling and then the interaction between the two, the so-called synergistic effects, really helps bring up that new hair count. For example, look at this 2018 study that compared minoxidil on its own versus the combination of minoxidil and microneedling. The authors reported very similar results to our own estimates here. The combination treatment was over six times more effective than minoxidil on its own. You can see in this photo the before and after of a study participant who had a good response to minoxidil alone. This is the absolute best case scenario for minoxidil monotherapy. But check out these before and afters from a participant in the combination group. The guy basically got his hair back. Here are some more photos from other published studies. These kind of photos would have been science fiction just 15 years ago. Now they're pretty routine. So those are the top 10 scientifically proven treatments for hair regrowth. There's one notable mention that we left out, which is PRP. We didn't add this to our list because one, the treatments are not really standardized, so it varies a lot from clinic to clinic. And two, it's insanely expensive, probably at least $4,000 for a treatment course. But the studies have shown PRP can work and produced an average of 33 new hairs per centimeter squared, which would actually put it at number two on our list. And for anyone who doesn't believe that blood has anything to do with hair loss, I guess they hadn't realized that literally injecting a part of the blood into the scalp helps the hair to regrow. Okay, so where do we go from here? How do we make use of all this data and all these amazing studies? Given that the top treatments involve Botox to relax the scalp muscles, minoxidil with finasteride and microneedling, here's what I personally use for the truly most effective hair loss treatment stack. So I use Maxoxidil with a scalp brush, once a week derma roller session, and a grow band to relax the scalp tension and improve blood circulation. If you can use finasteride, by all means go for it, but I can't use it. I prefer to use the topical DHT blockers in Maxoxidil. So it's a four step process that works for me based on the intensive research of the best ranked hair loss treatments. Maxoxidil plus derma roller plus scalp brush plus grow band. That's all for this video. I know it was a long one. I hope you found it helpful or insightful. And if you did, please smash that like button. Leave a comment with what you thought about the video and let me know which topic you want me to cover next. I try to reply to all the comments individually. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.